Once dipping my toes ever so slightly in the art drama side of YouTube, naturally Google can't handle doing anything beyond aggressively advertising anything the algorithm thinks you have a splash of interest in. With that, a username of sorts kept showing up on my feed. Someone by Lumi Starbun, featuring your generic pastel character anime drawing with some spicy claims attached. On a whim, one day I decided, you know what, screw it, I'll click one of the videos, figure out what it is, you know, thinking, mayhaps this is some juicy story. I couldn't honestly get through it though, and didn't really care enough and just seemed like petty BS I didn't care about. But regardless, the name kept popping up on all sorts of small art or drama channels and kept being recommended to me. So finally, after a couple of months, I thought, heck, let's give this a try and see what it's all about. Let's introduce you, who may not be aware of, an artist named Lumi Starbun. So let me preface this right now with a couple of things. Firstly, I'm going to refer to this person as Lumi and she slash her as her usernames and identity and gender status change extremely frequently and I cannot for the life of me keep track of it all. So if by the time this video goes up and she identifies differently than I am identifying her as, please forgive me. I honestly do not intend to keep up with this person after this video goes up for, well, reasons you will understand. Secondly, let me go on record and say allegedly. If there's anything I somehow goofed up on, I apologize. Normally I try to research topics really well, but this is a lot of he said, she said, or things that took place in DMs that had nothing to do with me, and a lot, and I mean that a lot of the stuff is like deleted, mostly by Lumi. So I won't have a receipt rich video this time. If you hear a cat popping off in the background, I apologize, and if you hear rain, also I apologize. Suppose those of you who enjoy just watching my speed paints this one goes out to you. Let's also give out a big spicy do not heckle anyone mentioned in this video. If you do, I will personally duke on your bedroom pillow. Do you want a clean human doo-doo off your pillow? No, do not get your pillow doo-doo done. -doo and do not go after anyone. We're a squad who discusses things, not a squad who invokes doo-doo pillows. All right, let's get into it, folks. So Lumi Starbun is a 16-year-old Twitter artist from Sweden who somehow got mixed into a lot of self-inflicted drama. She apparently appeared on people's radar when she started drawing for Madame slash Princess Ash, who is already an artist or YouTuber with some sort of not-so-positive history. <laughs> Gotta throw out a big disclaimer, I never really looked into the whole situation with Madame, Princess Ash, or whoever. I don't know what happened, and to be quite honest, I don't particularly care. I don't get involved with people like that usually, so excuse me if I don't understand the full weight of the situation. All I know is, when Lumi Starbun started complaining about not getting paid for a drawing for this person, nobody was shocked, but she appeared on people's radars. Supposedly, Lumi was under fire a bit for art thieving or copying other people's designs. I have no source, no sauce for this one, so I'm not really gonna focus on it. Art thieving and copying designs is a video topic for another day, but apparently this is one of several reasons Lumi left a bad taste in people's mouths. There was also allegations of her being hateful on Twitter, saying transphobic things and then turning around and trying to claim various gender identities. Again, this is another claim that I personally don't have the receipts for, so we'll take it with a grain of salt. So then, the shit storm begins. I will try to create a timeline, but I can't guarantee that this will be 100% correct. This is all a big mess. So from what I understand, Lumi Starbun was in a long distance relationship with a 17 year old American named Matt. She was friends with another girl online named Castiel. Castiel? After enduring abusive and manipulative behaviors from Lumi, Castiel made some sort of exposed video or something on Lumi or tried to come out about it all at the very least. I don't know how that went down for sure because if there is evidence of it, it's been taken down other than, you know, Lumi's reactions to it. Castiel confided incredibly private things to Lumi, such as what I interpret to be abuse from a family member in quite possibly a sexual manner. Lumi leveraged this against Castiel, knowing she has PTSD, triggering seizures, and causing further mental harm. Lumi responded to this by doxing her, her address, her phone, her father's face, her own face, and had people threaten and harass her family. Lumi then took to faking her own suicide on social media. Apparently, that would not be 
be the first or the last time that happens. She approached a YouTuber named Nani, asking if they were going to make a video on her. They said no. She continued to DM Nani in Discord, asking for help and encouraging Nani to make a video. She went and gave Nani her life story, I guess? Trying to explain why she does the horrible thing she does. Let's delve into that for just a moment. So she explains that she had an abusive family, or abusive upbringing. She didn't really exactly go into detail as to how so, but explained that because of that she was lonely and developed a manipulative and overly attached personality to latch onto whatever friend she had at the time. She said she also had multiple personality disorder, had an identity she named Mimi, who apparently is the the child she never got to be. Cringy, but I guess. Conveniently, it is also a frou-frou weeaboo Japanese name, but we'll continue on regardless. Mimi will be readdressed later on as well. <laughs> she explains that she was diagnosed with depression and autism. She says she also had suicidal thoughts starting at 13 and cut herself on occasion. She claimed she was lonely, so apparently she made a friend and became overattached to said friend, and every time this friend tried to leave her, she would manipulate this friend back into not leaving her. Eventually the friendship ended because the girl's mother didn't like Lumi and didn't want her around her daughter. I wonder why. She goes on to claim that the end of this friendship furthered her depression. Next, she claims she befriended and fell in love with some girl, which is already wild because she was so young, but regardless, went on to date her for seven months. She was controlling, overattached, just as she mentioned before with her friend. She would threaten to kill herself if her girlfriend left her and apparently at that time had three failed attempts at suicide. Well, I'm personally not sure if she attempted or if she had faked it three times at that point, but either way, it was used as some sort of ammo to prove to that poor girl that she wasn't screwing around and meant it to force her to stay in the relationship. Apparently, when that girl finally had enough, leveled up, and left Lumi, Lumi decided instead of telling the internet simply that the relationship ended, that the ex killed herself. Absolutely wonderful. Zero to one thousand. She then claimed her mental health was at an all-time low. She continues on to explain that she did all of that because she craved the attention she never got as a child. She'd fake suicide because she'd be so engulfed by positive attention and love. She so desperately craved. Let's take a moment and unpack all of this and have a chat. Let's start with the claims of an abusive childhood. I do not want to undermine her experiences as I obviously have no personal idea what she went through. She could have been spoiled. She could have been genuinely abused. I get it. A lot of us go through stuff like that way more than you'd expect. We all expect that everyone has great lives, but then once you get to know people more intimately, you discover deep turmoil and dark pasts that you would have never expected. It can range from cruel insults and manipulative behavior to full-on physical abuse and more. I personally have gone through some stuff that definitely weighed on me for a long time. I was absolutely one of those people who toted around their messed up childhood for way longer than I'd like to admit. But I, nor anyone else I know with more severe abuse, has acted like this child has. It goes without saying, and I'm sure most of us agree, a tough lifestyle isn't an excuse to behave like that. The only thing a rough experience speaks for is unusual behaviors that you work on on and try to get over. An example, when you suffer from PTSD, there are certain things that can spark a place in your brain that results in behaviors not deemed normal or acceptable by the public, such as suddenly crying or having a panic attack. When going through things like that, you work with professionals and you do what you can to improve your mental health. You also learn tools to help cope and deal with turmoil in the future. Trauma doesn't magically make you a master manipulator, starve for attention. Let me also clarify when I say get over, I mean like get through, not like get over it. Like I'm not telling you you're a brat or anything like that for those who may be concerned. <laughs> Let me also delve a little deeper upon something personal. This is gonna suck, but me and my siblings did not get a lot of attention from our parents. I had my phase of being attention starved, but that manifested as a desperation for a boyfriend or a partner. As soon as one relationship ended, another began, and in the event I didn't have a boyfriend, I was constantly crushing on someone. I had this insatiable desire to have a male figure love me, but after getting over past issues and having experience with someone who does truly love me, without smothering me or abusing me, I grew past it. My younger sister had it much worse, however. She not only had almost no interaction with our parents, but me and our other sister were kind of in an age range where we liked to chill out alone all the time, and she didn't really have much friends either. 
so she was really alone and attention starved. This manifested as acting out or getting into trouble all of the time because if she did something bad, people paid attention to her. She lied a lot and did some horrible things that when I was younger I hated her for, but even she was nowhere near the extent of this Lumi girl. She also eventually got over it and started to behave more like a normal person. I do not believe Lumi's manipulation and overattachment manifests from just simply loneliness as a child. I also kind of want to go out and say something, and correct me if I'm wrong, but not all mental disorders or behaviors have to be linked to something in the past. Like, you don't have to fall out of a tree and hit your head as a kid to have autism. You just have it. It almost paints this picture that in order to be a bad person, the world has to have somehow wronged you and therefore you can act the way you do. I'm sorry, but this world can be incredibly cruel and unforgiving. We really want to believe that there's a reason for everything, an explanation for everything, but sometimes there just isn't. I think she needs to focus less on what the past has done to her and more about what she should and can do in the future. The focus should be on how to accept her past and move on, not leverage her past as ammo to further abuse other people. And delving even further into mental health, she claims she was diagnosed with depression and autism. I will not discredit her there, it's very possible. But I've noticed every single person publicly who does something unacceptable always ties it back to the fact that they have autism and depression or they have anxiety and depression. But let's talk about autism first. I personally am not on the spectrum, but I have family members and many friends who are. They span from high functioning, not so much, and each of them are unique. The key factor in all of them is that their brain interprets social interactions a bit differently than the majority of people. With a lot of them, the issue is hypersensitivity. They pick up on way too much and their brain can't process every little detail that's occurring all at once. They're overstimulated and it causes them to break down. They may seemingly overreact to situations, for instance. Regardless, it doesn't cause abusive behaviors. It doesn't explain away manipulative tactics. There have been so many times I've had to stand by and watch the pain in my friends when some goon online does something manipulative and places the blame on their autism or depression. It's insulting and it diminishes the public's trust and opinion in those who are on the spectrum. It's additionally frustrating because autism isn't some disease that requires a cure. They're just people without normal typical brains. They still otherwise behave like any other person. Depression. I swear, every single YouTube apology ties in depression somewhere in it. Ladies, gentlemen, squirrels, depression does not cause you to say or do horrible things to people. Depression does suck and it weighs you down and it makes you a person you aren't sometimes, but you're more likely to recoil from interacting from people in your hobbies than to like passionately pursue drama and pain in others. Shit makes no sense. Depression doesn't make you crave attention. Depression makes you- Depression doesn't make you want to hurt people closest to you. Depression isn't a tool, an explanation, and I really wish people had stopped t discussing depression as if it is. Depression is an imbalance of chemicals in the brain. That's a magical get out of jail free card. And again, it's insulting to others who genuinely struggle and feel stuck in quicksand in their everyday lives for some teenage brat online to whine about their depression after abusing her friends multiple times. Depression is really difficult and I feel for all of you who go through it, Lumi included, but she should have kept that shit out of the equation entirely. I am sorry, but if she truly cared and was looking for reasonings for her behaviors, she needs to delve deeper than just I'm a depressed lonely autist and truly examine her behaviors. This is also a personal opinion I'm gonna slide in here, but people who threaten suicide are the worst kinds of people, like literally the worst. Cannot stand them. It's it's even worse that this isn't a once or twice scenario. This girl thrives when her close friends or loved ones are in pain. I'm no psychiatrist, but she really strikes me as a sociopath or something. Like, something is up with her, clearly. So I'm gonna move on briefly from all that for a bit and continue on into this story. So 2017, I guess, Castiel, Lumi's friend, makes that video exposing Lumi. And as mentioned before, Lumi, Lumi faked her suicide again afterwards. 
Eventually, Lumi came out with an apology video. You could find it mirrored online and reacted to by others, but I will summarize. She did a lot of repeating herself, saying things like, I was wrong, I won't make excuses for myself, I don't deserve your forgiveness, and saying very generalizing sweeping claims such as, I was manipulative, I was wrong. She explained how she of course has autism and doesn't understand or something, that she was homeschooled and has no friends and slowly all that hoopla, and it wasn't very well received. The problem stems from the fact that it sounds like she had to apologize, not that she wanted to. She didn't really explain what exactly it was that she did that was wrong, such as, I was manipulative. Okay, how? What did you do that was manipulative? It comes across as though she's hiding a lot when she does that. She also has no concern for how anything she did has affected other people. It doesn't feel like she has processed that concept at all. For someone who claims she was abused, she doesn't really seem to empathize and understand what abuse does to someone. People didn't accept the apology it seemed, so she moved on and bettered herself by faking her suicide once again. Cute. So she's sliding into Nani's DMs at this point, pretty much saying that she needs someone to kind of lead the way into bettering herself, but also at the same time stick up for her. She acts like this broken child who has no idea what to do, doesn't know right from wrong, but in the same breath admits she's wrong and knows that she is. Because of course, some stranger on the internet with self-perceived clout is going to make your bad behavior poof away magically. I haven't said it yet, but I'll say it now and continue to say this, but this girl needs genuine help. She needs a break from the internet and to be working with a professional, maybe even several. But regardless, her remedy was apologizing for fake suicide, saying she'd never do it again, by faking suicide again right afterwards, and then running to some other online personality to fix her mistakes for her. Also, finally in her apology video, she said she was ashamed of not allowing comments and ratings, and was open to, <laughs> open to critique, but blipped that video off the internet the moment people weren't buying her bowl poop. So Nani makes their video and Lumi goes on to claim that Nani was exposing her private life even though Lumi told Nani to. I also find it hilarious that these vague as hell explanations such as abuse of childhood and over controlling relationships with no details whatsoever as to how they transpired are somehow private. Things that she also tends to repeat a lot when she excuses her behavior. Hey kid. So I haven't really explained this at this point but somehow she started dating this boy Matt at some time I guess in the summer of last year I believe. I don't know the details but supposedly she manipulated him as she did her other relationships but he was manipulative too I guess. I don't know if birds birds of a feather flock together or if he's a victim of the abuse as well like you know the Kai and Onision situation. I have no idea but when this ish went down when the rela relationship ended Lumi took to deleting and creating new accounts and new personas like it was her full-time career. In one of those accounts she created a video exposing this ex. This is where this drama really flared up and Lumi Starbun started appearing in videos in my recommended. That is because she claimed he sexually assaulted her and that she was pregnant multiple times, once being miscarriage and once being yeetus the fetus, if you know what I mean. She went on to say all this stuff and people were not so fond of it, obviously. Not only is faking or threatening your death one of the worst things I think people can do, falsely accusing someone of the r-wording you is right up there with it. She went on to claim suicide again for the third millionth time. She had a fake gunshot wound picture apparently that became a meme of sorts. I saw someone post that picture and say that she's the real reason there's a toilet paper shortage. I got a little chuckle out of that. So now she's playing the boy who cried wolf when eventually when she does genuinely have something happen to her and will need help, I don't think anyone's gonna take her seriously. It's a shame. So from here on out I'm not really positive on a timeline but let's talk about some things she did. So she came out apparently at some point and apologized for trying to expose her ex-boyfriend saying none of it's true except that she is still pregnant apparently, which is super disgusting and awful because both of them are children, but that's none of my business. There were some leaked discord calls. They are available if you want to listen to them, but in them Lumi displays some creepy and disgusting behavior. It's like she's obsessed with ruining her ex's life. At some other point in an interview with Castiel, she would use- Lumi would use her persona Mimi to like cheat on her ex-boyfriend with a friend of 
his, and of course faking suicide when shit hit the fan. Which is weird because she said some something about the character Mimi being, you know, the child she never was, but then to, I don't know, cheat on your boy- I don't know, there's something that really doesn't smell right with me there, but whatever. <laughs> she also said some horrible stuff, like she was glad Castiel was, you know, abused or something, leveraging against that poor child. She has copy strike videos she doesn't like, one of them being her boyfriend whose channel was temporarily suspended because he had three strikes from her. People are also upset recently because she drew cheese pizza of her and a previous un underage boyfriend or something and solicited nudes or something from her minor boyfriend who I will not name. Let's also talk about manipulation. I think when you are being manipulated, you tend to portray those behaviors too when you are heavily involved with someone, such as a significant other or close family member who is manipulating you. Sometimes you're kind of trapped in this echo chamber where you have normalized a level of toxicity and will take part in it as well without, I guess, realizing it. I've been there. I've had a history of manipulative relationships and then I myself started behaving that way when it got really bad. It got to the level where I started to do things that I did not and could not self-identify with, sort of dissociating for the, from the person I was becoming. I hated the things I started to do and hated people like that and I couldn't really wrap my head around or believe that I had started to do any of that. There were also learned behaviors from my own aforementioned abusive past that I started to emulate. One of those things being when I felt I was hurt, I needed the person who hurt me to feel that hurt also. I needed them to prove to me that they are feeling the destruction and betrayal that I was feeling. When I was angry or hurt, I would open up an entire can of worms and instead of just being upset with them for what they did in that moment, I'd bring up every single thing they've ever done that was wrong and just explosively melt down about it all. It was a mess and continued to fester until I ended the relationship. Even then, I still wasn't moved past those behaviors. Thing is though, I had to confront them, the things that I did. I had to sit in my own mind and face that there are factors on my side that caused the situation to be much worse than it had to be. The biggest problem was that I wouldn't face them. I knew they were there, but again, I wasn't self-identifying with them. I knew I was being overly cruel when I was being lied to, but I didn't really address that. I eventually reached out and apologized, but what really helped myself personally was assessing the issue head on. And it starts with accepting that you did those things and it's okay that it was you who did them, as long as you can grow from it. It's incredibly difficult, but it's not impossible. The guilty conscience eats you up, even if it was small and it makes it so hard to face, but I faced it. I recognized the situation and I learned from it. I improved, I bettered myself, and I'm strengthened by it. The thing is though, this girl doesn't strike me as being self-aware the way she thinks she is. She knows she's doing bad things, but she doesn't seem to be processing any sort of remorse. That's what's scary about it. It's obsessive, self-involved, and destructive. I can only hope she can move on like I did, but I don't know what it's going to take. This girl is someone who has no issues putting others' well-being on the line, and attention is just a disposable currency for her. At the very least, all I can do is advise any of you listening to stay away from her so that she doesn't hurt you. As seen with Castiel, she goes after vulnerable people. Very likewise to Anisian, actually. Abusers have a lot of things in common. Either way, I know it may be difficult as her current thing is to change her persona and I did to D frequently to gain attention but evade the criticism, but if you, you know, notice her, just stay away if possible. I want to wrap this up with tips to those of you who are listening. If you're struggling at home, even if it's hard, you need to do whatever you can to reach out for help. And I know it's easier said than done, but the internet isn't going to make the hard things go away. Find someone, anyone. If you're having suicidal thoughts, please look into reaching out for help, especially. There are online and hotline resources who are there to help, who are there to hear your story and offer you support. Whatever country you're in, wherever you are in the world, there's somebody out there who will help you. Please take care of yourself, guys. I really wanna go on a tangent about online relationships as I was in a handful of them myself and had quite a few experiences that make me want to go big sister mode and just yap on about advice, but I don't think it'll be helpful. Regardless, I know you've know and I know you've probably heard it a thousand of times, but be careful guys. Take care of yourselves. Put yourself first, but be kind to others also. Alright, thank you so much for listening and putting up with this. I don't know how you guys are gonna react to this one because it's I don't know, it's not really a place I've gone before, I think. But let me know what your thoughts are. Uh if you're familiar with this 
story? Like, chat with me on this. This this shit's weird. And at first, like, I didn't care, but then as I, you know, learned more about it, I'm like, this girl's cray. <laughs> this shit ain't right. But that's obvious, you know. I really want to try to offer, like, helping thoughts, but obviously I can't always help, so it is what it is. But I definitely wanted to discuss it and, you know, not just, like, to come after a YouTuber in particular, but to kind of have a discussion on those types of things and I guess to figure out how to work around those. So, as always, give me your thoughts. If you have any questions, comments, concerns about the art in the video, as usual, let me know down below. I have no problems. If you have any suggestions for topics in the future, of course, leave them below as well. And you know what? I'm gonna go out and say something new here. If there's any, like, topics you want me to cover or you think I should cover, feel free to, like, tag me on, like, Twitter or Instagram or, like, DM me with topics. And if I get, like, multiple of, like, the same suggestion, I'll probably go after it. Because up to this point, if I got even, like, one suggestion, suggestion. I'm like, oh, I'll look into it. But like sometimes I, I look into it and it's not really like fruitful enough for a video. So <laughs> it'd be like that sometimes I really do. But I do like listen to you guys and consider it. And sometimes there's topics that I feel I need to kind of put more work into, such as a coloring tutorial. So that's why it's not coming out quite as fast as other things, but come out eventually. But yeah, if you want a full size PSDs with all the layers, if you want walkthroughs or tutorials that are not on YouTube or you want me to guide you, redline your artwork, whatever you may want in addition to what I already provide you here on the free interwebs, head over to patreon.com slash yukibuns. Uh, I also have my Etsy store open right now with some new goodies and I plan on making more. So head over there if you want to buy some physical goodies and follow me on social media. That'd be dandy. I love interacting with you guys and seeing what you guys do. And most importantly, I've been doing an artist feature at the end of my video featuring artists i'll put it up on screen now we have a discord server where we uh, discuss art or just chat in general and i also have a special art feature channel so if you want your art featured as well head over in that channel post your goods heck yeah boys but i also want kind of want to emphasize the server again because i really like having a community where people can be comfy and support each other and have a good environment to kind of open up and better yourself but not i don't know feel like pressured so Opportunities are yours. Take it if you want. If you don't want to, that's totally fine. I don't like talking that much, honestly. Um, I hate getting DMs because I'm not as social as you might think that I am. So yeah, it'd be like that. So thanks for listening to all this. Sorry if it's super long. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye!